As most of you know, we have two chrismations today. And chrismation is uh, confirmation, okay? Uh, so uh, Cal and uh, Jews over here, okay? And they're about to be anointed. Um, and uh, this is their personal Pentecost, receiving the graces of Pentecost. And throughout their life, the Holy Spirit descending upon them to empower them. The apostles uh, didn't just all of a sudden become perfected. They were perfected compared to where they were before, but they continued to advance throughout their life. And the Holy Spirit kept descending upon them even after Pentecost. Because Pentecost is not just a day, it's, it's, the, it's the life of the church. The Pentecost is continued in the life of the church. Or we could say the church is Pentecost continued throughout time. <clears throat> Everyone can sit down, uh, you just kind of watch it. Cal and the. Let us praise the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
mercy. And by the anointing with his most holy chrism, and by the power and the action and the grace, and the descent of the Holy Spirit, they may become brave and victorious witnesses of Christ our God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And by his holy anointing, with his holy chrism, they may be firm, strong, and steadfast in the true faith, love, and hope of all the days of their life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That by the anointing with this most holy chrism, they may be given the grace to profess the name of Christ our God before all people without fear of shame, and to be always ready to accept suffering for his sake with love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And by the anointing with this most holy chrism, they may grow in all virtues and grow in the commandments of Christ our God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> that by the anointing of this most holy chrism, and by the power, <clears throat> action, grace, and the descent of the Holy Spirit, they may grow to complete maturity in the fullness of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That they, together with us, be delivered from all flux and wrath that and be, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Protect, save, and have mercy upon them, and preserve them, O God, and us by your praise. Lord, have mercy. Blessed and glorious lady of the Theotokos and every bridge we with all the saints. Let us fit ourselves one another in a whole life unto Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, God, ruler of all, source of all good things, O Son of righteousness. You have raised up a light of salvation for those in darkness, through the manifestation of your only begotten Son and our God. Though we are unworthy, you have given us a blessed cleansing, holy water, and a divine sanctification through holy anointing. Now to your servants, Count and uh, Jude, you have been pleased to give new birth by water and uh, the Spirit for the forgiveness of their sins, whether good, willingly, or unwillingly. Therefore, O Master and gracious King of all, grant to them also now the seal of the gift of your all-holy, almighty, and adorable Spirit, and the communion of the holy body and precious blood of your Christ. Keep them in your holiness, strengthen them in the true faith, deliver them from, all the, from the evil one and all of his deceitful ways. Keep them in purity and righteousness by a fear of you that brings salvation that they may please you in their every word and to you to become sons and heirs of the heavenly kingdom. For you are our God, our God of grace and salvation. We give glory to you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. As I anoint the different parts, uh, I'll say, the seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit, and everyone says, seal. Okay. So we just look we'll repeat that. <laughs> Sealed. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Oh, yeah. The seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Sealed. The seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Sealed. The seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Sealed. The seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Sealed. The seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Sealed. The seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Sealed. The seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Sealed. The seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Sealed.
You were also crucified, O Christ our God, and by death have trampled death, being one of the Holy Trinity, glorified with the Father and the Holy Spirit, save us. Lord, your strength gladdens the King, he rejoices greatly in your salvation. Blessed are you, O Christ our God. You have shown the fishermen to be all wise, sending <coughs> down upon them the Holy Spirit. Through them you have caught the whole world in your net. A lover of man's time, glory to you. You have granted him his heart's desire. You have not refused the prayers of his lips. Blessed are you, O Christ our God. You have shown the fishermen to be all wise, sending down upon them the Holy Spirit. Through them you have caught the whole world in your net. O lover of mankind, glory to you. You came to meet him with the blessings of success. You have set on his head a crown of precious stones. Blessed are you, O Christ our God. You have shown the fishermen to be all wise, sending down upon them the Holy Spirit. Through them you have caught the whole world in your net. O lover of mankind, your glory to Baptized into Christ, out of being clothed. 
Now, 
how on the last, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Anyone who believes in me, as the scripture says, from within him there shall flow rivers of living water. He said this, however, of the Spirit, whom they who believed in him were to receive. For the Holy Spirit had not yet been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Some of the crowd, therefore, when they had heard these words, said, This is truly the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. Some, however, said, Can the Christ come from Galilee? Does not Scripture say that it is of the offspring of David and from Bethlehem, the village where David lived, that Christ is to come? So there arose a division among the crowd because of him, and some of them wanted to seize him, but no one laid hands upon him. The attendants therefore came to the chief priests and the Pharisees, and these said to them, Why have you not brought him? The attendants answered, Never has man spoken as this man. The Pharisees then answered them, have you also been fooled? Has any one of the rulers believed in him, or any of the Pharisees? But this crowd, which does not know the law, is accursed. Nicodemus, the man who had come to him at night, who was one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man unless it first gives him a hearing? and knows what he does. They answered and said to him, Are you also a Galilean? Search a sea, and see that out of Galilee, Galilee arises no prophet. And again Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me does not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of light. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, everywhere present and living all things, treasury of church was already like when God in the Garden of Eden, he creates the man's body, but he's lifeless. It's until he breathed into him the breath of life, the spirit, that man became a living soul. So the apostles were chosen. They're the body that Christ chose, and he gave them a commission, a big mission in the world. But in one sense, they were lifeless. They do not have the power of themselves. But now when the Holy Spirit comes upon them, they're filled with grace. Instead of hiding, they just go, go boldly into the city. And they start speaking to the people. And during this time on the Feast of Pentecost, uh, all these people were on pilgrimage. The Jews from all over the, the world at the time. They did the diaspora, I mean, the Jews living in different places outside of Jerusalem or outside of Israel. And then, of course, all the Jews also from that area. And, um, but since these Jews were living in these other countries for a long time, they, were, they spoke those tongues. So it says they were, were Cretans, were Arabs, and we all have our own language. But we understand this man, Peter, who now has received the Holy Spirit, and now he's preaching, and he's using a, a Galilean dialect, which is some form of Syriac or Aramaic. And... Uh, Everyone 
seems to understand a, a blessed uh, miracle there, where even though there is a diversity of tongues, the faith makes people one. And this is a very important thing to keep in mind. It's because there's a lot of division in the world. A lot of people like to accentuate the divisions. And everyone who wants to become tribalistic, you know, this is my tribe, that's my tribe, whatever. Or I associate with this, I identify with that. But our identity as Christians is Christ. He is our identity. So St. Paul said, to live is Christ. Okay? The life that I live is no longer just my own. It's Christ who lives in me. So, today the Holy Spirit comes upon the Apostles. So we see this icon, uh, the, it's a kind of stylized picture of the, uh, the coming of the Holy Spirit, the descent of the Holy Spirit. And in this icon you have uh, the Mother of God in the center, sitting in the center, and the, the Apostle on both sides. Uh, this icon, this pestle icon, uh, has an empty space okay, in the middle. And each one's trying to emphasize something different. One is here in this icon, it symbolizes just like the Mother of God, it's the Virgin Mary who brought about the, the birth of the head, or Jesus Christ, the, the head, is the Holy Spirit came upon her, and then the power of the Most High overshadowed her, and then she conceived the Son of God, who's the head of the body. And now at Pentecost, the Mother of God is there praying with the disciples for the coming of the Holy Spirit, now the Holy Spirit descends uh, upon, she's praying with the Apostles, and the Holy Spirit descends upon the Apostles, and now they come to life. So the body of Christ now, is, it's like the Spirit breathes into that body of Adam, and now it becomes living. So now the, the Apostles come to life. And not only they have they come to life, they are empowered and fearless, and they go forth and start to preach. And these people from all these different nations understand them. Um, this, there's something else in that reading that we didn't hear today, but because it would be a long, a pretty long reading, it's the whole chapter. But at the end of that story, this is chapter 2 of the Acts of the Holy Apostles. So at the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit come upon the Apostles. The Apostles are preaching, people, uh, they're, they're filled with zeal. And some people say, oh, they're drunk. These people are drunk or something like that. He said, no, it's only at 9 in the morning. Uh, um, I guess, yeah, uh, and then, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, um, but then, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> I distracted myself. <laughs> yeah, what was I saying? Okay. So, the, oh, so the, some people are mocking them. And uh, so some people hear the Word of God, and other ones do not. And that's what happens in every age. The Word of God goes forth, and some hear, but some heed and listen, and others don't heed the call. Okay, that happens in every age. Jesus says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, whoever does not believe will be condemned. Okay. So, but in every age, the Holy Spirit continually tries to seek us out. He doesn't just give us one chance. But throughout our whole life, people uh, are being called by God. Sometimes God pulls them, but He's a gentleman in the sense that He doesn't force Himself on anyone. Okay? But there's many people, but some of the strangest time of their life or circumstances, they start to believe. And they never thought that would happen. And uh, so that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit enables and renews and changes people. The apostles were like, they were in, there, in that upper room, they are hiding. You can remember not just a few weeks before Christ had been killed. And they thought, well, maybe my people might kill us or something. You know. But also, the Lord said, pray during this time. Until my coming. Until the coming of the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. So they're kind of like a sailboat without the wind, okay? You have a sail, but there's no wind blowing, so you just don't move. But when the Holy Spirit came on this Pentecost day, the 50th day after, after Passover, after the resurrection of Christ, it says he came as a mighty wind that swept through the house, and tongues of fire 
appeared upon each one of them. And it says, and they are filled with the Holy Spirit. In a sense, the Holy Spirit filled those sails with air, with the blue, because the Holy Spirit, 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 Ruach, is, could mean breath or wind. Okay, so the Holy Spirit, in a sense, the apostles, the sails were open, but nothing happening. But now the Holy Spirit fills those sails, and now it gets moving. The apostles move out of the upper room, open the doors, and then they start to preach. And um, and then St. Peter starts giving this long talk, and I'm not going to read that part, okay? But I want to read the ending of that first Christian sermon in the world. His first bishop, uh, uh, an apostle, speaking to the people, having been empowered by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now the people, right, this big crowd of people, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? And Peter said to them, Repent, metanoite, change, turn around, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. And he testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt, perverse generation. And those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. So you see the apostles are given life by the giver of life, the Holy Spirit, and then now they give life in part, life of baptism, to those who heard the word of God and were baptized. These 3,000 were born again into in the name of Christ, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and now they shared in the life of the, the Holy Trinity. But there's the thing, I guess this is kind of exhortation to Jude and to Cal and to all of us. You know, I, I was a... Um, much of my life as a, as a Roman Catholic, right? And uh, I taught in uh, catechism, uh, for high, mostly for adults in high school. And we prepare some people for uh, con confirmation. That's the same thing as chrismation. Okay. And uh, a lot of people kind of saw confirmation as a graduation. <laughs> okay. So I have to go to catechism here. And finally, I finished catechism. That's it. Okay. And then when later on, when I turned 18, I'll just leave the house. <laughs> and I just stop practicing the faith. Okay. Confirmation, chrismation is not graduation. Okay, it's the beginning. Okay. And this is the key thing here. So what did those 3,000 persons? It says 3,000 persons were added that day, and they devoted themselves. They dedicated themselves. They adhered to a rule for their life. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, to the life of fellowship in that community, to the breaking of the bread, and to the prayers. Not just praying, the, the prayers, and there's something in common that's held. Okay? So they devoted themselves to the teaching, the didache, the teaching of the apostles, to the koinonia, the communion, of the breaking of the bread. Some separate the koinonia from the breaking of the bread, but then traditionally it's the same thing. So the communion is not just this fellowship with the community, but it's communion in the body of Christ that's broken in the Holy Eucharist. So um, they devoted themselves to the didache, the teaching of the apostles, to the koinonia, the communion of the body and blood of Christ, in the Eucharist, and also to the prayers in the liturgical life. Not just some prayers, but uh, prayers that are held in common. Those three things we should think about okay, is a sign that I have received the Holy Spirit through the Apostles and their ministry is that I devote myself to the teachings of the Apostles. That's the New Testament. The teachings of the, the as we read these 
scriptures every Sunday. These are the, the, the teachings of the apostles. So they devoted themselves to it. Not just everyone was on hear it and half hear it and not think about it. But do we devote ourselves? Do we devote ourselves day by day to the Word of God the best we can? There's all kinds of things. I bet, think of how many words you read in a day. How many images you see a day on the computer or whatever, any kind of thing. And all those images, and how many of those incline us toward God? Or are all these really distractions from God? All these things have their place. But Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All these things have their place. Um, devote yourself. Let's devote ourselves to the teachings, to the true faith. Not a faith that was developed by some person in New York, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, sorry, um, you know, the Mormonism, you know, oh. uh, the, the thing, you know, American made religions here in the United States. Uh, the church already existed for 1,800 years before they came around. Okay? So, no church 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, it has to be the church that Christ founded on Pentecost. Because that church, that body of the church upon whom the Holy Spirit descended still exists. That organism is the ecclesia, is the church. Okay? In Pentecost, this action of the Holy Spirit descending, giving life, purifying, uh, giving, uh, renewing, empowering, <coughs> that is what the life of the church is. Here today, every time you go to church, you're entering into Pentecost. It's a portal into Pentecost. So to be empowered by the grace of the Holy Spirit who comes upon you. They devoted themselves to the didache, the teachings of the apostles, but also to the koinonia. Koinonia is, in Latin, is communio, or communion. In union with, communio. Okay? The union in the breaking of the bread. Our artoclasia. Artos is bread, and classia is to break. Okay? So artoclasia is the breaking of the bread. So the communion, koinonia artoclasia, without a comma, I would say. Okay. Um, they, so they devoted themselves also to communion. But to devote yourself to communion means you also have to, have to prepare for communion. Are we prepared to? Do we really want to receive Christ in Holy Communion? Do we go to confession? Do we pray? Uh, sometimes we might be tempted to have the radio on, and right after we get to the church, we turn it off. Okay. So I hope my all distracted and stuff like that. And then we come in and try to enter into like a heavenly experience when we're so inundated, just, just the earthly experience. We need some time to transition. That's one reason our services tend to be kind of longer in these church. It gives us a little time to get into it. So we repeat things over and over, okay? Uh, not just to make it long, but it helps us to prepare to, to enter into God's presence and to receive the holy mysteries. So let's, let's devote ourselves to the koinonia. But the koinonia is also the body of Christ, it's not just the Eucharistic body of Christ, but is the ecclesial body of Christ, the church. So we have to devote ourselves to the life of the church, to support each other, because if we, if we receive Christ in Holy Communion, we, we receive the body of Christ in Communion, but we ignore the body of Christ, which is the body of you, okay? Then we're really offending God, okay? So if we're devoted to Christ in, in the Eucharist, in, in the breaking of the bread, we need to be also devoted to Him, praying for each other. You know, people show, like we've had two people die recently, okay, we had this funeral. It's good to be there, to be praying for them. That's our job, we're the body of Christ. One part of the body suffers, the whole body suffers. One part of the body is exalted, the whole body is exalted. We have to do that, we have to see that. Whenever something, there's a disgraceful thing, maybe somebody, some bishop or some priest or something like that, uh, we should look at it and kind of, we should, almost, we should be embarrassed personally, but also it, it hurts us personally. Okay, because we're part of the body. We don't have to say, oh, look at that church, as though you're not that part of the church. Okay, we are part of the church. Okay, um, and um, so take personally people who insult Christ, insult the faith, 
we should take that personally. Other people, religions will do that, and we kind of just put up with it. You know, we maybe we'll even laugh with other people. Okay, that's not devotion to the koinonia. Okay, be devoted to the teaching of the apostles, didache, and to the koinonia, the communion of the body of Christ in the Eucharist, but also our union together here. And the final thing it says, and the prayers. So we should be in sync with each other in our prayers too. We, there's a lot of freedom in how we're going to pray, but we should do some elements that we do in common. Okay? And one of the prayers I'm just going to recommend uh, is the Heavenly King Prayer. We've been hearing it several times. We haven't heard it for 50 days. Um, the whole oh, Heavenly King Comforter. And um, that prayer to the Holy Spirit, we have copies in the back. It has an exp I put an explanation of it phrase by phrase. A very beautiful prayer. Uh, every If a person is a Byzantine Catholic, then they should actually be saying it minimally three times a day. So we're praying that minimally three times a day, and that's supposed to be part of the prayer, every prayer. Okay, so you pray before you pray. You pray to the Holy Spirit. Okay. So, finally, let's pray for Cal, for Jude, and for all those persons throughout the world today, or this, at this time, usually during the Paschal season, many people get baptized, receive Holy Communion, or Chrismation, Confirmation. Pray for all of them to be faithful. This is the beginning of your consecration. Okay. We actually started at baptism, but we're finishing it now, or completing, completing the initiation uh, as of today. So, um, so devote yourself. Each one of us has to devote ourselves to the Lord and to one, each, uh, one another. And to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit, be glory and praise and honor now and to the ages of ages. Amen.
to survive for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered, and was buried. He rose on the third day according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And He is coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, together with the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified, He spoke through the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I profess one baptism for the remission of sins. I expect the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us stand at the right, let us stand in awe, let us be able to talk to the Holy Revelation in Mercy, peace of sacrifice of praise. For the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and Father, and the kingdom of the Holy Spirit, be with all of you. And with your spirit. Yeah. 
that the cross, the tomb, the resurrection is on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting at the right hand, and the second coming in glory, offering you your own, from your own, always and everywhere. We praise you, we bless. Take of them, and we bring about the spirit of vigilance, the remission of sins, the communion of your Holy Spirit, the fullness of the heavenly kingdom, and confidence in you, not judgment nor condemnation. Moreover, we offer you the spiritual sacrifice for those who depart in the days, the forefathers, fathers, teachers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for every just spirit brought to perfection in faith, especially for most holy, most pure. Most blessed and glorious lady that they are couples and ever virgin Our 
this holy heavenly mystical altar, the realm of spiritual fragrance, and sit down upon us and return this divine grace and give the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Asking for you to share faith and for the of the Holy Spirit. Let us commit ourselves, one another, in a whole life unto Christ our God. To Remember 
Glory be, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom. Remember me, O Master, when you come into your kingdom. Remember me, O Holy One, when you come into your kingdom. May the part take you of your holy mysteries, O Lord. Be not for my judgment or condemnation, but for the healing of soul and body. O Lord, I also believe and profess that this which I am about to receive is truly your most precious body, your life-forgiving blood, which I pray may be worthy to receive for the remission of all my sins and for life everlasting. Amen. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O God, cleanse me of my sins and have mercy on me. O Lord, forgive me for I sin without number.
I had to, um, I should have mentioned this earlier, but there's a long prayer uh, that we, uh, with the closing of the Pentecost liturgy, we begin the return to kneeling. So we haven't knelt for 30 day, or 50 days, which I'm supposed to have. Um, and um, so we're going to return to kneeling. So these are the kneeling prayers. They're, they're, they're bridged. Uh, they're about twice as long. So, <laughs> so yeah. So we're going to do this. And these are prayers. A lot of them are mainly, a lot of them are for praying for the departed, but then also praying for that we would be worthy to them. unsearchable, unchangeable, unsurpassable, immeasurable, and forbearing. You alone have immortality. You live in an unapproachable light. You have made heaven and earth and the sea and all the things that created in them. You grant to all their requests even before they ask. We pray to you that we be, and we beseech you, O Master, who loves mankind, the Father, O Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, for our sake and for the sake of our salvation, you came down from heaven and was incarnate to the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary uh, and Mary the ever virgin and the most glorious God bearer. <clears throat> At first he taught us with words which were then later confirmed through deeds when he endured the saving passion, giving us your humble, sinful and unworthy servants the example of offering supplications to you with necks bowed and unbended knees for our sins and for the people's acts done in ignorance. Hear us on whatever day we call upon you, for you alone are most merciful and the lover of mankind. However, especially hear us on this present feast of Pentecost, on which after our Lord Jesus Christ had ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of God and Father, he sent down the Holy Spirit upon his holy disciples and apostles. The Holy Spirit came upon each of them and filling all of them with an inexhaustible grace. They spoke of your grandeur in various tongues and they prophesied. Now therefore hear us who are now praying to you and remember us lowly and, uh, and condemned as we are and return our souls from captivity of sin. For we have your loving kindness interceding for us. Accept us all who fall down before you, calling out, we have sinned to you. We have been committed from birth, from our mother's womb. You are our God. But because we have spent our days in vain endeavors, we have been stripped of your help, having been deprived of every defense. But trusting in your generosity, we cry out, do not remember the sins of our youth and of our ignorance. And cleanse us of our secret sins, and do not reject us when we become elderly and when our strength weakens. Do not forsake us and do not return us to the earth before you have made us worthy to return to you and until you have prepared us, making us acceptable through grace. Appraise our iniquities by your generosities. Again, does the multitude of our of transgressions place the abyss of your generosities, O Lord. Look upon uh, the, the down from the heights of your holiness upon your people here present who are waiting for abundant mercies from you. Visit us with your goodness to deliver us from the assaults of the devil. Organize our life around your holy and sacred commandments. Assign to your people an angel, a faithful guardian. Gather all of us into your kingdom. Grant forgiveness to those who have put their trust in you. Pardon them and us and from sins. Purify us by the openness of oper by the op operation of your Holy Spirit. Abolish the schemes of the de enemy plotted against us. Encompass us with your holy angels. Arm us with the armor of your righteousness. Surround us with your truth. Support us with your power. Deliver us from every assault and from every treacherous plot laid by the adversary. For it is you who shows us, who shows mercy to us and saves us, O Lord our God. We render glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit now and ever and forever. Amen. On bended knee, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Whatever flowing, living, enlightening source of creative power, 
co-eternal with the Father, who most marvelously fulfilled the entire plan concerning our salvation, O Christ our God, who has shattered the indissoluble bonds of death and the bolts of Hades, who trampled upon, who trampled upon a multitude of the evil spirits, offering yourself for us as a blameless victim and giving your most pure body, untouched and unapproachable by any sin, as a sacrifice. And uh, through this awesome and inscrutable sacred sacrifice, you have given us eternal life. For by descending into Hades and smashing the eternal gates and having thrown the way to heaven, having shown the way to heaven to those who were sitting in darkness, you, uh, you ensnared Satan, the prince of evil, and the snake of the abyss into divine, divine life and enticement. And you have bound him with the chains of gloom by your immeasurable power, and you shackled him in Tartarus, uh, the deepest eternal region of Hades, and uh, through your might confined him to the unquenchable fire and the eternal darkness. Thus, so uh, the great and eminent wisdom of the Father, you manifest yourself as the great helper of the misfortunate, and you enlighten those who are sitting in the darkness and the shadow of death. You, O Lord of everlasting glory and beloved Son of the Most High Father, O everlasting light of the everlasting light, O Son of righteousness, hear us who are praying to you and grant repose to the souls of your servants, our ancestors, our brothers and sisters who have already departed, to all of our relatives and to all Orthodox believers for whom we now make a remembrance. For the authority of all things is with you, and in your hand you control all the ends of the earth. O mighty Master, the God of our fathers, and the Lord of mercy, O creator of the, of the race of mortals, and of the immortals, and of all human nature, O creator of life and of its termination, of that life of uh, that being uh, transferred into another life, you measure out the years for the living, and you appoint the time of death. You order present necessities and expediently uh, secure those needed for the future. To those who have been wounded by the sting of death, you make them glad with hope of resurrection. <coughs> you indeed are the master of all, O good, O God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of those at the ends of the earth and of those far away at sea. On this last and the great salvific day of the Feast of Holy Pentecost, you showed us the mystery of the Holy Trinity, consubstantial and co-eternal, without division or confusion. You have also shown us showed us the, the descent uh, and arrival of your holy and life-creating Spirit, being poured out in the form of fiery tongues on your holy apostles, appointing them to be the proclaimers of the good news of our faith, and showing them to be the confessors and preachers of the true divine teaching. Hear us, your humble servants, beseeching you, and grant repose to the souls of the departed servants who have already departed into a place of light, a place of refreshment, and place them in peace from which all illness, sorrow, sighing have been taken away. Commit their souls to the places of the just and make them worthy of peace and repose. For the dead cannot praise you, O Lord, nor do the, those in Hades venture to offer confession to you that we, the living, bless you. We, we pray and offer you supplications and sacrifices for our sin souls. Accept then, O Master, our entreaties and supplications and grant repose to all the fathers, mothers, children, brothers, and sisters of each of us, to our relatives, to all the people in our country, and to all those who have already departed in the hope of resurrection and of eternal life. Inscribe their names in the book of life, committing their spirits to the bosom of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the land of the living, in the heavenly kingdom, in the paradise of delights. With your radiant angels, guide all of them into your holy dwelling place, together with them. <coughs> also raise up our bodies on the last day that you have appointed according to your holy and unfail unfailing vow. Therefore, O Lord, there is no death for your servants when we depart from the body and return to you, our God, passing over from things that are most sorrowful unto things that are most wholesome and delightful and into repose and joyfulness. If we have in any way 
in the least way sinned against you, be merciful to us and also to them, because there is no one who is pure from stain before you, even if his life be for but a single day. You alone, O Lord Jesus Christ, are you alone, Jesus Christ, our Lord, while on earth manifest yourself to be sinless. Through you we have all we all trust in obtaining mercy and the remission of sins. For this reason, because you are a gracious and loving God, pardon, remit, and forgive us and them for having fallen into sin, both voluntary and through human frailty, those committed will willfully or through ignorance those that are evident and those that are unnoticed, those committed whether in deed or thought or by word or whether in any of our conversations and emotions. For you are the strength, the repose of your soul, of the souls and bodies, of our souls and bodies. We give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Glory to Christ our God, our full glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Give the blessing. May Christ our true God. Christ our true God, who for our salvation sent down the all Holy Spirit from heaven in tongues of fire upon his holy disciples and apostles, have mercy on us and save us by the prayers of his most pure mother, the ever virgin Theotokos, and of our holy father, John Chrysostom, Archbishop Constantinople, and uh, through the prayers of our holy father among the saints, Bas the great Archbishop Sestri, in Cappadocia, patron of his holy temple. And through the prayers of all the saints, for Christ is good. And he loves mankind. Amen. May the Lord God grant to his servants, Cal and Jude, peace, health, and happiness for many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many years. to all you his servants present here and to your families and friends peace, health and happiness for many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many blessed years. In health and happiness. In health and happiness. God grant them many blessed Oh, you are.